Hello, sweet girl. What you doing? Hey guys. So this spring, I've been planting a ton of stuff in my garden. And I was thinking about the fact that I know that right now is the right time to plant those things as opposed to any other time. And I thought that it would be a great time to make a video explaining to you guys how I figure out when to plant things. Because I think that understanding when to plant something is far more important than me trying to tell you when to plant something because it's gonna be so individual. Sometimes there are these emails that come out, um, especially from seed companies, I find, and they're like, 10 things to plant in March or whatever it is. And I'm like, for who? In what climate? Um, the 10 things that you're gonna wanna plant in March, like here where I am in South Carolina, it's not gonna work out for you if you're in Wisconsin. It's probably not gonna work out for you if you're in Australia, you know? Um, and so figuring out when to plant things, figuring out how to figure out when to plant things is a really important skill to develop as a new gardener. Check out all this dead nettle right here at the base of my steps. I keep thinking I need to harvest this and do something with it. Anyway, so the first thing that you need to figure out is what are the needs of the thing that you're trying to plant? Uh, what is the temperature tolerance that that plant has? Um, what is it perennial or annual? That'll be really good to know. Um, and how long does it take for you to get a harvest off of that thing? Um, I'm a vegetable gardener, and so most of the things that I'm growing, I'm thinking about getting a harvest. Um, but this would be the same for flower. Like the harvest would be uh, how long until you get a bloom. And so those are the main things that you really have to know before you plant something, before you decide when to plant it. Um, but there are a couple of other optional things as well. So for example, one of the things I considered when planting squash last year was uh, the pest that I had the previous year, which was vine borers. I also considered squash bugs, but vine borers were the ones that really seemed to decimate my plants. And so I considered that pest for that particular plant and I looked at its life cycle. I looked at when I could expect it to be um, at the stage in its life where it would be boring into those vines. And I looked at my season, the length of time that I had that was the right temperature for a squash. And I said, okay, well, if I wait until after these vine borers are past this stage, I should still have enough time to grow this squash. So maybe that will help me avoid the pest pressure a little bit. Another generally optional thing to consider is a uh, harvest temperature guidelines. Um, this often comes into play for um, things like lettuces and spinaches and all sorts of brassicas. Um, these things can exist uh, both before and after a frost and a lot of the guidelines for this will tell you to plant it in the fall and then harvest it right after a frost because it'll be sweeter. Um, and of course you could harvest it before that and still have the harvest, still have grown it at about the right time, but you're going to optimize your harvest by looking at the temperature that you want your plant to be at when you do harvest. I'm just walking around looking at stuff while I'm shooting this video and this little chamomile sprout right here, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's this itty bitty sprout with itty itty bitty little second leaves coming on. That is so exciting. Maybe I should save this stuff for the garden tour, but it's really exciting. It's the teeniest, tiniest little sprout, and um, I've had a lot of trouble getting it to grow, um, so I'm very excited to see it. I also got to come through and pull out all these little straw plants. Um, the, the, sorry, the seeds from the straw are sprouting, um, so I got to come pull all these little sprouts. Anyway, so how would you figure out those things about the, th the plants that you want to plant? Um, so you can start with your seed packets. Usually those will have some good information, but um, I've found that they often, to, to try and condense things down to a seed packet, they actually end up not putting a whole lot of information on there. Um, so honestly, just searching the internet is a really good resource. I can't tell you how much of how I've learned about gardening is from the internet. I mean, you're here right now, right? Um, so all I do, I just Google, you know, 
how many days till harvest uh, for potatoes. And or I'll type in what is the um, preferred temperature for potatoes to grow at. And it'll start bringing up stuff. And you just write that down uh, and start collecting information about what the plant that you want to grow needs in order to be able to grow. And then the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is the basically the same thing except for your climate. You're gonna wanna figure out what kind of climate you can provide and when that climate is going to occur. So often this looks like uh, figuring out when your frost dates are. Uh, this again is something you can do via the internet. Um, just type in wherever you live and frost dates and it'll come up for you. Um, and this will tell you your frost free season, which is often what we're talking about for um, a lot of the annuals that you'll grow in a normal vegetable garden. Um, however, you're also going to want to look up potentially monthly weather or historical weather for your area to kind of be able to determine when certain highs and lows are going to be hit. Um, for me, I have to keep in mind how hot it gets in the middle of the summer. And sometimes I have to plan around that because, for example, tomatoes will stop uh, setting fruit when it's too hot for them. Um, and on the flip side of that, you might want to figure out um, when it's going to get maybe not frost, but maybe below something like uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit for something like lettuce that can take a frost, but 20 degrees is really too low for it. Every time I'm like, oh, I got them all. I take another look and there's more. There's so many of these little things in here. That's definitely a downside of using straw as a mulch. It's all these little sprouts that come out. I just noticed something else really new. I gotta show you guys. My one blueberry plant that's been looking great is already setting flowers. Look at that. That's so neat. It's only the beginning of March. Um, and this plant is already looking so healthy, trying to make some fruit. So in addition to figuring out when your climate is right to support the growth of the thing, you should also consider um, season extensions because I would bet that a lot of you don't live in a climate where you could start something like a tomato outdoors and uh, have it fruit before it gets too cold for that tomato again. Um, and that is why you will often see people starting tomatoes and peppers indoors. Um, this is a form of season, season extension. Um, similarly, there's things like uh, frost fabric or uh, any other sort of cover that you would put over your plants when it's just a little too cold to kind of extend the season either at the front end or the back end of the season, um, just so that you can sort of create a better environment for your plants uh, because yeah not everything that you want to grow is going to be perfectly well suited for your climate i would say a majority of the things that you want to grow are not like super well suited to your climate they're probably not native to your climate uh, and that's where a lot of the work of gardening comes in is figuring out how to create better conditions for these things that we're trying to grow where they wouldn't normally grow and then my last piece of advice for you is to We'll look for advice from people who live in your climate. And when I say climate, I really mean climate and not zone. Um, you can check out a recent video that I made, uh, kind of eh, kind of ranting about zones and how they are not uh, nearly as helpful when figuring out when to plant something as a lot of new gardeners are kind of led to believe. Um, so I'll link that up here for you guys. But the thing is, uh, gardening, is very location specific. And I can only give you so much advice. Um, if you are one of these few people who live near me, um, that's great for you. My advice is gonna be way more applicable to you. Um, but if you don't live near me, I really do recommend looking for advice from people who either live in your area or live in a very similar climate. Like we're looking same amount of rainfall, kind of similar humidity in the atmosphere, uh, similar uh, temperatures, highs and lows, uh, all of this stuff, it matters um, far more than, for example, when a zone tells you oh, this is your lowest temperature for the year that it hits for maybe one day, maybe 30 days, who knows, zones don't tell you. 
Anyways, I'm not gonna get into that full rant again, but the point is don't expect yourself to be able to do it alone. None of us have done it alone. We have all either looked to the internet, looked to other creators, looked to people in our community to learn more about how to grow things. Um, so just don't hold yourself to the expectation that you can figure it all out all by yourself and be really good at it. Um, because knowledge is so, knowledge is so shareable. Um, and the reason that we know how to do things so well now is because a lot of people before us figured it out and told us about it and now we are continually building on that knowledge so to wrap it up you're going to look for what you what your plant needs what the thing you're trying to plant needs you're going to look at what your climate can provide you're going to think about ways that you could extend your season to give the plant more of what it needs and then you're going to look and see what other people have done if you liked this video and found it really helpful, um, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of teaching for new gardeners. I am not a like veteran gardener by any means. I'm still like sub 10 years gardening. Um, but I think that that makes me, uh, puts me in a really good place to teach new gardeners because I am much closer to remembering all of the struggles that I had when I was new that I think a lot of veteran gardeners tend to forget wherever struggles. Additionally, these videos are being increasingly made possible by my patrons. Um, and if you are thinking about where you could find community of people to ask your gardening questions, um, my Patreon Discord is a really good place to start. Um, this is a place where you can come and ask me and all the other gardeners in their questions or share your successes. Um, I think it's uh, equally important to have a community to ask your questions to, but also a community to uh, absorb and share information with just in general because people do things in really different and interesting ways um, and I, I really love that aspect of it. Uh, I also have exclusive stickers for my patrons that are designed by uh, artist friends that I have and I feel really lucky to be able to support myself on the Patreon but also extend that to others in my life that could use a little extra support as well. If you're a new gardener, I'm going to go ahead and leave my gardening basics playlist up here for you. I think you're going to find it really helpful. Um, and I hope you come back. So until next time, I wish you happy gardening.